Yes, uh, we are going to start the last uh, presentation of the day. Uh, before we start, I would like to say if you have any question, please use the Q&A button that we have here in the Zoom. And, and now I would like to invite Nebrasi to present uh, his work. Welcome, Nebrasi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, nice to see you all virtually at this time of the pandemic. Uh, we are most, where the most of the population are staying at home. Hope you and your loved family are well. Uh, my name is Nebras El Mrabat, a lecturer in cybersecurity and networks at uh, Glasgow Caledonian University, Scotland. Joined me in this paper, Professor Joe and Flex from the University of Leicester, uh, Department of Informatics, yeah. And Finjin from Kofa Norman University, China. Also, she's contributed in this uh, work. Today, I'm going to present to you our framework that evaluates a number of machine learning algorithms for cybersecurity abnormal detection as a part of Domino's Peer to Peer Smart Grid EU Horizontal Project. Yeah, good. Um, in this workshop, we are going to introduce the challenge we face as cybersecurity experts to detect abnormal behavior. A background of the topic will be discussed. Then I will present the method we use to evaluate the 12 machine learning algorithms in this study. Also, I will present the experiment we create and the result we get from the running these experiments. Finally, I will, uh, I will further discuss the result and make the conclusion with the future work. Yeah. Uh, today's challenge is how to detect the people that have motivation to attack uh, the critical infrastructure, where they have the opportunity to access the peer-to-peer -peer smart grid platform and the capability to launch attacks such as Putnet, brute force denied server attack, distributed uh, denied server attack, uh, many and uh, privilege escalator, many other uh, cyber attacks uh, known. One of the fa famous uh, abnormal detection method is a signature based approach that is usually used to monitor network activity using the pre-identified cybersecurity attack indicator to specify the security threat. This system, however, have fatal limitation when it comes to zero day attack or encrypted uh, traffic generated by attackers. It's therefore, it's necessary to consider a defense system to reduce the risk. This can be achieved uh, achieve by, uh, uh, by predict, uh, predicting the abnormal uh, behavior of, uh, of malicious attacks based on the states of art uh, machine learning algorithm, which are used to train the defense, uh, the defense model and predict any abnormal behavior. Researchers nowadays can classify data collected from network activities, such as from IoT devices, SCADA devices or SCADA system, mobile phones, smart grid, or any log file come from any machine. A researcher can classify this data into either a binary classification of normal or abnormal behavior or multi-class attack classification of normal or different type of abnormal behavior associated with the specific attacks. It's difficult, however, to achieve a high level of prediction accuracy while maintaining a low false alarm uh, rate. In the recent years, machine, learners, uh, machine learning algorithms have become the popular problem-solving approach in various disciplines of science, from medical uh, diagnosis and traffic prediction to cybersecurity approach like online fraud detection, uh, email spam uh, filtering, and network abnormal detection. There have been an increase in the amount of research in recent years seeking to apply machine learning to detect abnormal behavior in the cybersecurity field. 
using either classic machine learning uh, classification or deep learning uh, classification technique. From the, uh, from the review of the lecture show that uh, there are numerous ways to integrate the use of AI with the cyber security for the prediction uh, or detection, for prevention or response and monitoring. The, can the current implementation challenge for our Dominus project uh, or our Dominus project the peer to peer uh, energy trading is that there are various machine learning algorithms to choose from. And the start point to implement our abnormal behavior prediction system for the project is to evaluate and compare the performance of, of, of the various machine, uh, uh, machine learning algorithms, the valuable machine learning algorithm using the public uh, available uh, data set. This will lead a better for us, this will lead for us a better understanding to, of the topic and provide an excellent chance to implement this technique or technology within the project to reduce the risk of knowing and unknowing uh, attacks. Uh, the methodology to be able to evaluate the machine learning algorithm in terms of abnormal detection, we have implemented this simple method shown in this uh, slide. First, as shown in, in the left side of the figure, we used uh, three uh, data sets available, as I said, uh, publicly available. The first one is UNSWMP15, and the second one is CICIDS2017 data set. And the third data set is the Industrial Control System ICS Cyber Attack data set. All are used as the input of, uh, to the algorithms. We select these three data sets because these data sets contain a wide range of the current attack scenario, which meet the real world criteria. They are also publicly available. And the next phase uh, is the data pre-processing -pre in our methodology, where we integrate all files from each data set into a single CSV file. Follow it with removing any infant, none, and symbols value from the CSV file. The final step in the dataset preprocessing phase is the feature scaling, where we normalize the label to zero or one for the binary classification, and we <clears throat> for binary classification, and we perform a label scaling for multi-class classification. Third phase is to apply this data set uh, in, uh, to each of the selected 12 machine learning algorithms. The selecting of these 12 uh, machine learning algorithms was based on the performance of these algorithms in the previous study. Some of these, as shown in the figure, some of these uh, algorithms are uh, random forced, uh, decision tree, and naive Bayesian for the classic machine learning, which are the top, uh, the, the third uh, phase on the figure and on the top. From the deep learning algorithm, we use such as CNN and, and LSTM algorithms. We use six, not just these two here, as shown in the figure. The main, the main point in this phase is to train the model and test it against the same data set. 70% of the data for training and the 30 and the rest or 30% for testing. The last phase in the figure is getting the result. The main two performance metrics we first use are accuracy and precision. However, further five performance metrics are used to get better understanding. We go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah we, we, we done our experiment using the high performance computer facility environment at the University of Luster. Uh, <clears throat> this facility or the, this high performance computer, it has 64 uh, gigabyte of RAM 
with a CPU uh, speed uh, 2.5 gigahertz that has 20 core in total. And two uh, Nevada Tesla uh, P, uh, uh, P100 GPU cards too. Also, we use Python 3.6 as a programming language. And we, uh, and <clears throat> we use uh, skilled learning for classic machine lear uh, learning uh, library. And for the deep learning algorithm, we implemented using Keras. Uh, on top of that, we use TensorFlow to enable uh, the GPU. Also, we use Panda, Nami, and this and other functions in different uh, scenarios. As discussed earlier in the methodology side, slide, the three selected that set ha have different properties, such as if attack label name, features, uh, collection duration, and scenario. We have gone through these four steps to clean uh, the data. First step we have done is to convert and integrate all files from the same data set into one single a CSV file. Then uh, we have delete any infant, non and simple values from the CV, uh, C, CSV file and feature scaling by normalize all features. And then the final step depends on the label classification type that we used, namely binary classification, used label normalization, and for multi classification, we use label scaling. For the performance matrix, seven, seven evaluation matrix are used to measure the performance. We have used seven matrix as listed uh, here. Uh, <clears throat> accuracy, first one of them is accuracy, which refer to the percentage of total number of correct classification. Then precision, while the precision refer to the closeness of the measurement to each other. And recall, measure the percentage of actual positive which are classified as an attack. And also the false positive rate, which, is, which measure the percentage of normal traffic flagged as attacks to a normal uh, connection data. Uh, we also uh, collect the F1 score to measure the test accuracy and we measure the, uh, area, under, the, uh, the area under the ROC curve which summar summarize, I think, the size of the area under the ROC curve, which uh, um, uh, is the trade off between the true positive rate and the false, uh, false positive rates using different uh, property uh, thresholds. And also the, fi the final uh, um, performance matrix we use, confusion matrix, which is used to, uh, to evaluate the performance based on the capability of classifi classifying network traffic into a correct attack type we used for multi-classification. A confusion matrix allow the visualization of the agreement between the true label and the prediction label. That means we will compare the two la labels, the real uh, label and what we have predict in uh, confusion matrix. Next one, yeah. The experiment, the experiment result. Uh, I have uh, put the two tables here, one for binary classification, another one for a multi-classification results for the three data sets as uh, seen here. Uh, the three data sets were separated uh, so that 70% of the data is used as a training data set and the remaining 30% of the data is used to evaluate the, train, uh, evaluate the machine learning uh, model. Splitting uh, the data into 70-30 ratio provide a better result than other tested ratio in our case. That means we tried uh, by 90 uh, to 10, but we found 70 to, uh, 70, uh, to 30 is better result in our case. Two classification were used to evaluate the data set. First, the binary classification, which in the left, 
where the label has just two outcomes, normal or attack. The label has just two outcomes or the result, the traffic show us normal or attack and that's it. But the second is the multi-class classification label uh, have a range of values that may be assigned based on attack type. That means if it's the traffic, if it's not normal, if it's attack, what type of attacks is denial of server attack of its uh, distribute denial of server attack, what kind of attack exactly this is how, what, why we use a multi-class classification. Uh, with the binary classification, the prediction accuracy for uh, the UNSW NB15 data set reach 85.5% from the left table using the decision tree algorithm, while the other algorithms were in the range of 71% to 87%. Meanwhile, the accuracy for uh, the other uh, 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 data set, CI, CIDS, 2017, that set reached 99.9% uh, uh, using uh, random forced algorithm, whereas the other algorithm were in the range of 55% to 99.8. On the other hand, when we're using, when we're using the third data set, the ICS cyber attack data set, random force achieved the best result with the accuracy of 92.8%, whereas other algorithm were in the range between 70 and 86%. However, for the multi-class classification, the table on the right, the, the prediction accuracy for a UNSW MP15 data set reached 73% using the random force algorithm. Meanwhile, the accuracy for the CICIDS 2017 data set reached 99.9 using uh, 99.9 yeah, yeah, using uh, the random force algorithm. On the other hand, when using the ICS cyber attack data set, the decision tree algorithm reached 92.4 accuracy. We conclude that both uh, the random force and decision tree accuracy reach um, result, um, yeah, both the random force and decision tree accuracy result for the binary classification and multi-class classification were better than any other method for all the data set. That means from these two table, we conclude that uh, random force and decision tree have better result than any other um, algorithm. <clears throat> However, to discuss the result further, we create ROC curve for all the data set. Sometimes the difference in the result from the previous table were marginal. But using the a a a AUC matrix, we found that random force had the best performance result of all the algorithms, ranging from 0.96 to 1 for the binary classification and from 0.97 to 1 for multi-class classification. Uh, from the figure to 4 in the left, are for binary classification, and the four in the right are for multi-class classification. The two top are for UNSW15 dataset, and the bottom CIC IDS um, dataset. However, in the paper there is other uh, four, uh, but I haven't included them in the slide because the space there is no uh, the limit space. Yeah. Uh, as I said, um, <clears throat> this indicate the random force because we said uh, the random force has the best performance result, which uh, for all of them between uh, 0.96 to 1 in the binary and multi classification, this indicate that random force achieved the lowest, the two most important thing, achieved the lowest false positive rate and the highest true positive rate. That means from the ROC here, we conclude that uh, random force achieved the lowest force positive rate and the highest true positive rate. 
The primary, uh, the primary concept behind random, uh, random force is that it combines a single network of multiple decision tree into a single uh, model. That's why we may get the result good because uh, the reason it combines many, many uh, decision tree into single uh, one or single tree. However, with the large data set, the training time will be very long since it generates many trees that require high co uh, competition power and resources. It can be said that random, uh, random force outperforms all the evaluate deep learning algorithm. That means well, the random force based on the result is better than deep learning algorithms in our, but just in our case. Because deep learning algorithms require maybe maybe because deep learning algorithms require a large data set that <clears throat> that uh, than that which we use uh, which we use to generate better performance. On the other hand, Nave Base has the worst performance of all the tested algorithm, ranging from 0.5 to 8.8. Uh, for the binary classification and 0.5 to 0.86 for multi-class classification. In comparison to all other algorithms, therefore, Naive Basin achieved the lowest, this is the most important thing as well, Naive Basin achieved the lowest true positive rate and the highest false positive rate. Uh, a multi-classification uh, confusion matrix is used further uh, investigation into uh, random force the result as shown in this figure. We implement a confusion matrix to get more understanding of the result for random force for multi-class classification. Where the result showed that random force ach achieve a uh, uh, good uh, prediction result close to the true label. Because here, if you see in the left, uh, the true label, which is uh, because all the data set have already have the label, the true label, we compare it with the prediction label here in the bottom. Sorry, because I'm moving my mouse, I thought you can see my mouse, but uh, I think you, you don't. Uh, <clears throat> uh, using the second data, data set, the UNSW MB, uh, MB15 data set, the matrix sh uh, uh, shows in the right figure a mixed result, not very good result, where random force has some very low agreement to detect attack. If you can see in the right figure, uh, uh, some of uh, <clears throat> uh, like the backdoor, deny of server and exploitation there is no good agreement between the prediction label and true label. That means <clears throat> uh, random force is better with CI, uh, CI, CIDS 2017 dataset and okay with uh, UNSW MP15. Uh, yeah, in conclusion, we have evaluated the performance of the 12 machine learning algorithms for the detection of abnormal behavior that may be in the indicate of cyber attack. We have recommended the best fit algorithm, which is random forced, and also conclude that naive base classification has the lowest performance in terms of accuracy, precision, recall, and so on. It's evident, however, that the selection of the most appropriate method will depend on the data set you use. We also observed that in many cases, the difference in the performance uh, table are very uh, marginal or very similar to each other. Our future work is to evaluate this method on the smart grid data set that we are creating during the testing phase of the Dominus smart grid project. That means previously we used uh, the valuable publicly uh, data set, but in the future we are we started to evaluate it with our uh, data set. Also, the training and testing time of the selected method will be me measured to identify the best performance in terms of efficiency.
Yeah. And thank you. If you have any question, I think there's many questions I found down, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nebrasi. Uh, we have some questions here. Yes, you are right. So uh, the first one is in the multi-classification, how did you aggregate the precision and the recall metrics? Is it the average? Uh, okay, let me just go back to did you want the position oh. yet uh, it's not the average to be honest it's 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 not the average but um, uh, it's not the average but um, for each one of them yeah we can create for each one of them and then we calculate the average yeah yeah yeah, yeah. For, each class, oh. for each class you have one uh, precision for example and then you 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 do the average yeah, of yeah. your classes yeah, yeah. okay um what folder of cross did you do cross validation so if yes uh, the the question is what folder of cross validation did you use uh, actually we don't we, we try to make it as simple as possible because okay. yeah we, we try to make as when we get the data set we just try to uh, input it to our models with the minimum change yeah okay uh, maybe uh, you can use the cross validation in, uh, like uh, in a uh, future work because it can uh, help you to get to get better results because you can yeah. change the set of the, the data that you are training and testing. So maybe yeah. it can help you. Uh, yeah. I'd like to know, how did you configure the, the models? Like in terms of how many trees, how many layers, how many nodes, how did you design the models? Okay, yeah, uh, actually for the, because there are uh, 12 machine learning algorithms and we tried to make, we, we try to don't change the default configuration of the algorithms to get the result. And uh, that's why we, we haven't done many change on the models. And I think, um, yeah, we haven't done much change on each model as a default. And I have my colleague, uh, he's not here, I think, Mm -hmm. he, he done these things for in the programming aspect. Okay, yeah. so maybe for instance, for the CNA models, uh, did you mm -hmm. use some previous model like a VGG or Google Net? Do you know this? I don't know to be honest exactly what he used. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, no worries. Um, but yeah, they can they can email it to me and then we answer it to him. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. After that, yeah, feel free. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I'll do the last one. Uh, you see, how do how uh, do you think that the, your model, your performance, a uh, good, well in a new data set, in a new? Okay, w w what we can see is that like random force in, in one of the data sets is ninety nine point nine. What's unbelievable, yeah. I mean. And the next step, what we are going to try is to try the same model in new data set that we already created in our smart grid project. And the whole idea of this uh, evaluation is we need to decide which machine learning algorithm to use to our project. And we came now, the, we said, based on the paper, we will use the random force. Okay, so, 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 so you are going to use the random forest for the final yeah. framework, let's say. Yeah. Okay, part. so again, thank you for your presentation. Uh, if uh, anyone has another question, please, you can address the, the question to, the, to, to his email, to email. So uh, thank you again. Just remember that uh, tomorrow we have more cyber science. So hope everyone can uh, join again and take care. See you soon, guys. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.